So this video is focusing on plant transport. Specifically, we're discussing how water is transported in plants, how water is absorbed through the roots, passes up through the stem, enters the leaf, and where most of it will eventually evaporate out into the atmosphere. Water enters the roots from the soil by the process of osmosis. And osmosis is a very important topic that you need to know about. Osmosis is defined as the movement of water molecules from an area of high water concentration to an area of low water concentration. And that movement is across a semi-permeable membrane. So think about it. Water is going to move from where there's lots of it around the root hair in the soil to where there's less of it into that root hair cell and it's going to do so by moving passively across the semi-permeable membrane. As well as water, plants need important minerals and these minerals are transported from the soil into the root hair cell by means of active transport. And then once inside the root hair cell, they are transported with the water up through the plant. Give two examples. Well, magnesium is needed for the formation of chlorophyll and calcium is needed for the formation of those middle lamellae. So once the water has been absorbed from the soil and it's in the root hair cell, it passes from cell to cell, eventually reaching the xylem in the root. And it's in the xylem that the water is going to be transported with those dissolved minerals up to the top of the plant, to the leaves. Xylem forms this system of long, narrow, hollow tubes that are continuous from the roots right up to the leaves. So they go the whole way from the roots right up to the leaves. So at this stage, just know that water enters the root hair cells by osmosis, that passive process. Know that water and dissolved minerals are going to be transported in xylem and know that this is possible because xylem forms this system of continuous very narrow hollow tubes and these will go from the roots right up to the leaves. So what we have to learn about now is how water actually travels upwards in the xylem up through the plant. And there are two processes. The first is root pressure and then there is the cohesion tension model. So let's discuss root pressure and bear in mind that it plays a minor role and root pressure is not generated by all plants. So you know that the water enters the root hair cell by osmosis and it goes from cell to cell until eventually it makes its way to the xylem. This happens continually so water molecules are going to be pushed upwards by the water molecules coming behind. This is root pressure. So root pressure could only account for the movement of water upwards a short distance. It's not great enough to overcome the force of gravity in tall trees. So to explain how water travels against the force of gravity up through these very tall plants and trees, well then we use the cohesion tension model. This theory was put forward by Henry Dixon and John Jolie and they were both scientists in Trinity College in Dublin and it's really important that you do know both of their names, it gets asked frequently in exams. So when we're writing about the cohesion tension model, we have to discuss transpiration, adhesion, cohesion and tension. So let's start with transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water vapour from the surface of a plant, the aerial parts of the plant, so the leaves. You know that on the leaves there are these openings called stomata and one of them is called a stoma. Most of them are on the undersurface of the leaf and it's out through the stomata that water vapour will evaporate out into the atmosphere. So because of transpiration there is this continual flow of water upwards through the plant. This is known as the transpiration stream and this is possible because water is behaving like a column or a chain and you have to be able to explain why. So transpiration is pulling this great column of water or this chain of water upwards. So what makes the water behave like a chain? So it's all down to two properties, cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is the strongest. This really means that water molecules are attracted to other water molecules. They have a great affinity for each other and they bond together using hydrogen bonds. Adhesion. There is a force of attraction between the water molecules and the walls of the xylem. Think of to stick adhesion. So lastly, we have tension. So transpiration is taking place in the leaf and the water is evaporating and diffusing out through the stomata. And because water is behaving like a column or a chain, this is because of cohesion and adhesion, transpiration results in this pulling force, this tension, and water is pulled upwards through the plant. It's very easy to summarise the cohesion tension model. Just know that it was put forward by Dixon and Jolie, those two Irish scientists, and write down TACT, T-A-C-T. That means that you're going to be able to remember to write about transpiration, adhesion, cohesion and tension. So what are the factors that affect or speed up transpiration? Well, high temperatures, low humidity, gentle breezes and high light. So at the end of this chapter, know how water enters the plant through the root hair cells and all about osmosis. Know that root pressure 
only plays a minor role in the movement of water upwards through a plant and that not all plants do exhibit root pressure. Know that water is transported in xylem. Know the structure of xylem, that it's reinforced with lignin and this prevents it collapsing inwards due to the tension. That's in another chapter, but it's a good idea to revise. Know that where there is root pressure, it would only account for the movement of water upwards a very short distance. So it's really the cohesion tension model put forward by Dixon and Jolie that explains the upward movement of water, particularly up great heights against the force of gravity, and use TACT to help explain it. It's transpiration, adhesion, cohesion, tension. So the best of luck with all of that revision. Remember to use your textbook, to do lots of questions, to look at past papers, and most importantly, to listen to your teacher. Best of luck.